Hey guys, long time no see. Just kind of wanted to uh, show you, show a little bit of FIFA 20. I just downloaded the demo a couple nights ago, so I haven't really had too much of a chance to play it. So I figured that, you know, maybe I could play a quick game. Just kind of give you guys some of my thoughts on the differences between this and FIFA 19. I think actually like a month or two. Yeah, it's been about a month now. Last month I actually had the opportunity to kind of... Uh, play through the beta, which was really cool. That was an experience like no other. I was really grateful for that opportunity, so that was kind of nice. But now the demo's kind of coming out, so I'm guessing they've taken some of our uh, feedback into consideration. So it's been kind of cool. Let's take a look. I ended up picking or randomizing the PSG, and I wanted to play Liverpool. I kind of did that on purpose just for curiosity's sake. I was curious to see who Liverpool all had. Let's see, we got a 3-4-1-2. Interesting formation with two wing backs, of course. Munier's a beast, so is Neymar, Cavani, and Mbappe. Man, this team is an offensive powerhouse. Let's see who we got on our bench. Di Maria, of course, none other. Yeah, team looks pretty good to me. Don't usually play this formation, but considering FIFA's just defaulting to it, we'll stick with it, why not? I could probably bring these two back from wing backs, but wouldn't be PSG style, so we'll go ahead and we'll keep it going. Looks like we're playing at the Bernabeu as well. We won't play on semi-pro. That's no fun. We'll play on, like, world-class or something. Since I'm newer to the game, I'll put it. go ahead and put it on world-class just so I don't get too destroyed. Nobody wants to see me get destroyed. Unless you guys do. Totally cool with it. So, let's see. I love these mini-games. They're so relaxing. Unless you're playing them with friends and then, oh, yep, and then that happens. So, that hasn't changed much. Let's see, the Iniesta... Oh, whoops. And he has to cross over. That's a new feature where it tells you when things go wrong, like you hit the obstacle. I believe it tells you when you lose the ball, too. Here, let's try this out. Yep, out of the zone. Okay. I'm guessing it tells you when you lose the ball, too, and stuff, so. Let's see what it tells us then. No, uh, didn't think so. Paris and Liverpool. Oh, that's kind of cool. Time finishing is a little bit better. Right out of the gate, that's just kind of something I noticed. Time finishing, I feel like, in FIFA 19 was such a new concept, and I'm kind of surprised they actually even kept it in FIFA 20. Doesn't make too much sense. Well, let's take a second here to see how the graphics and imagery look. It looks pretty good to me. But, you know, initially everything looks good. I think if I played this on Xbox One X, I'd probably be blown away. Even right now, I'm kind of surprised that it gets exponentially better each year, so... All good signs, of course. It's so weird seeing PSG stuff the Bernabeu, but demo always conventionally has the Champions League license. I think that's just FIFA's way of showing off the fact that they got it not too long ago. Jeez, these guys look so real. It's scary. It's kind of weird. All their physiques look the same to me. I think they could do better with the physiques in general. They all just look really thin. Van Dyke looks about accurate, but the rest of the guys, yeah. Alexander Arnold, pretty accurate. Allison, pretty accurate. Yeah, the graphic. I mean, the the graphics on the players and their mechanics look pretty good so far. I mean, like I said, exponentially better each year. The jerseys look really cool. And Mbappe looks just like he, he does, and so does Neymar. So. It's always intriguing watching them in the Champions League these days, Lee. Well, it is when they're in a position to go out really and buy any player they want. That does not give you an advantage. Okay, I'll kind of skip through this a little bit. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and take the trainer off and as well as change the camera angle. The camera angle I usually like to play with, this is just my convention, is the telebroadcast. Just because it allows me to see the entire field for the most part. So, you know, just makes me feel a little bit better. But, you know, it all depends on what your style is. Right, let's see what we got. Passing feels about the same. So is dribbling. Perhaps a little bit more fluid, of course. But I think that just kind of comes with... Uh. Oh, I forgot Herrera now plays for PSG. I'm a, I'm a United fan, so... Felt kind of weird seeing him in a non-United uniform. Really good boxing out. Um, or shielding, I should say. I'm thinking of a basketball term. But I noticed in previous games, if you use that left uh, trigger, they usually don't shield in FIFA 19. In FIFA 20 with Cavani, it just kind of shielded, shielded off. Kind of interesting. All right, let's see if I can do some crazy stuff here with Cavani. Yeah, no. It's too far off, I think. Now we'll just shoot it for giggles. 
All right, let's try this again. I forgot Neymar is taking this. Let's see if I can get Cavani here. Ooh, not a bad shot. See, I haven't been passing too much yet, so we'll see how that kind of goes. Feels pretty similar in terms of fluidity. Feels a pretty similar to the 19. The telebroadcast angle in itself, and like I said, guys, if you don't use the telebroadcast angle, totally get it. You know, everybody's got their preferences, but it feels a little bit more... Like, I feel like the camera feels a little bit more further away than in the past, which is fine, you know, not a huge difference. Doesn't like it hurts gameplay-wise, but... Dribbling, I think, feels a little bit... I mean, the dribbling animations of these players look a little bit more natural than usual, so that's something to kind of note. I think each year... I mean, I think in terms of between Pez and FIFA, I think Pez is just better gameplay, better mechanics in general. But I think FIFA is starting to kind of catch up in that regard. Especially with things like that, you know, the animation, it was fluid, it was lifelike, it was real, it didn't feel so scripted. Oh, I thought I drew the foul there. Everything feels a little bit more natural. And the referee has decided to award the free kick to PSG. Verassi now. Yikes. I will note, I, I, I do notice now that, you know, when players receive a pass, they actually kind of naturally shield it a little bit too, or they take it with the proper foot that, you know, the opponents aren't waiting for them on, so that's always good. I remember in 19, sometimes you'd pass on the ball and you're like, don't show it to your opponent, and they'd do it anyway. It's like, what? It was just strange. What I mean by showing it to them is like basically like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shield the ball on the wrong side of my body so that you have a chance on it. Oof. Hey. No, that's another bug that FIFA has not fixed. I kid you not, since I have been playing. Oh my goodness. So what happened there was. I just took a quick throw and I tried to do it really quickly so I tried tossing it to my left. Well as you can see it did not go left so when I put the analog stick at that left angle it'll just kind of um, overwrite it and just throw it immediately to my right to no man's land and it's infuriating guys. It's been going on since FIFA 17. I've been playing since FIFA 14 so that puts it into perspective for you. That's my one pass. I'm, so, I'm shocked they haven't picked up on that yet. I mean, honestly, it's been years now, and it's just... I don't know if that's like an accidental control that I'm getting, but... Also, that header looked a little bit more real, too. Like I said, more, more realistic movements in general, guys. I'm not going to nitpick them to death, because I think you guys can kind of get the idea. If you need more clarification, just let me know. I'm happy to provide it, but... Um, yeah, it's like just all the movements in general feel a little bit more authentic, a little bit real. You know, if they have an awkward angle on a ball, they're going to have to travel the right path in order to get rid of that awkward angle and to make the play on the ball that they're looking to make. Doesn't feel faked or rehearsed at all. Doesn't look it anyway. Do I have any milk left? Yeah, boss. I need some chocolate milk, too, after this. Oh, man. I'm extremely excited for Volta football for the most part. Um, when I played it in the closed beta, it was I actually got a chance to play like some of the story mode. It was it was wild. It was really fun. It I think it's a suitable. I'm not gonna spoil too much, but I think it's a suitable replacement for the journey. If I'm being honest, and I didn't know that that was their intent, was to replace the journey with. Uh, now we're gonna take a shot here. Oh. That half. Yeah, I didn't know that, that that their intent was to replace uh, the journey with Volta Football, so it'll be really interesting to see how that all goes down. Pretty uneventful game so far. It's kind of tough when the games are only four minutes long, too, so you'll kind of find that with Volta Football, too. The games are really short. Actually, I've played through this a couple times now. Like, you know, I've, I've had my, uh, my fill so far of the demo. I'm excited. I mean, the game comes out in two weeks if you're buying physical, which I'm kind of teetering between buying physical copy or not. Because then if I download it, you know, obviously save myself a little bit of time. Then again, if I just buy it, I kind of like having the physical disc plus two resale value. Even if I sold it for a dollar, at least I get some of my money back. 
That's what I did with FIFA 19. Or not FIFA 19. I'll be doing that next. FIFA 18 and 17 I sold online. Not for much because it's the physical copy of the disc and who wants that. But, you know, somebody somewhere does. Just got to be patient. Easy for the back line to pick him up. Needs more movement. And the attack goes through Cavani. Ah, poor pass. Jeez, I haven't played against the computer in a long time. If you guys have been following my channel, I've been playing a lot of FIFA 19. For I mean, obviously, that's kind of what the main bread and butter of my channel is about, is FIFA 19, and among other things, too. I'm not a one-trick pony, promise. Um, but I've been playing a lot of FIFA 19, and my channel's just dominated by that. But now that FIFA 20's come out, it kind of gives us something to look forward to, something to try. Especially the Volta football. I mean, I, my goodness, that looks like fun. Wow, that was kind of a... The throw there, too, was a little bit more guided, a little bit more uh, maneuvered around the players strategically, too. I think in 19, that's one of the shortfalls of... The keeper play was just awful in FIFA 19. FIFA 20, from what I've been seeing, is a little bit, it's a little bit better. When you make those throws, it actually, you know, there's a purpose behind them. Of course, you get power just like you did in FIFA 8 or 19. Jeez, I'm losing track of my years. However, in 19, it just wasn't as navigable as it is in this from what I've seen so far. So, good signs. I think goalie, like I said, goalie play is just one thing I think they really need to improve in this game. And I think they're starting to, starting to get the idea. Especially, you know, last year with the addition of the... Um, the neutral camera angle when you're doing a goal kick. That always helps. They need to do that for free kicks, I think, too. Unless you're, like, trying to shoot. But maybe they should give you the option of what kind of angle you want to work with. Whoa, what are you doing? See, I might get a couple lob passes in. Jesus, this is quite a boring game. <laughs> That's an interesting animation behind. Yeah, offside for sure. No, I'm not taking out Neymar for Draxler. Oh boy, mission Joel backwards. Man, I'm getting tired too. Wow, long day today. I'm excited to be here with you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Maybe just giving, you know, just giving some thoughts on FIFA 20 from the demo what we've seen so far. Oh boy. That was weird. Like I said, more realistic movement. Pretty exciting. Oof. Sadio Mane. Calm it down for a second here. Through balls feel a little bit more natural. Oh, Neymar. Yeah, see the camera, the camera when it adjusts, it kind of hangs back a little bit if you notice. It'll like take a second to sort of adjust and then it'll catch up. 19, it just sticks with you the whole time, which is, I think, a little bit more beneficial. So not really a huge fan of what they've done to tell the broadcast, but that's just one man's opinion. But like I said, it doesn't affect gameplay too much anyway, so barely worth mentioning. But, you know, stating facts. Liverpool trying to click into an attacking gear with the game level in the closing moments. Well, we get to see what overtime or extra time looks like too, so that'd be kind of cool. Well, extra time here we go. Really, not let you do extra time. Apparently not. Okay, some extra time. All right, we'll just move on. Let's play a game of Volta. Play some Volta football. Not gonna stick through any of these. These really aren't too important, but. And then they're going to prompt me to buy FIFA 20, which I'm not going to yet. I'm going to buy it the day it comes out in store. So let's play some Volta football. Let's see what they got in store for us there, too. Sit back and relax, guys.
almost bought a pair of those shoes. Not even like that same exact pair. That is it Vinicius Junior? I believe it's Vinicius. Duh, of course. I don't know how they do all those moves with the ball. I tried that quite a few times, and I just end up kicking myself in the nuts, so there's that. <laughs> all right, let's see what we got coming on here. First to four, okay, in Amsterdam. There go the squad. All right, here we go. It's so funny in college, I play, uh, I guess you could call it, I mean, Volta football, basically like futsal. Play that a lot at school. I think the, the goals here, though, are a little smaller, so I don't know what to call this, but. Yeah, free kick. Oh, yeah, Volta football, it's fun, though. Everything feels a little bit more uh, robust, a little bit more fluid, perhaps a little bit more condensed. See, the interesting thing about, you know, Volta football like this, or like street ball, everything's got to be a little bit more uh, quick, fluid. Nothing more than a tap is probably a good amount of power for a shot. I just gave it a little tap right there of the B button, but... I'd say Volta feels a little bit, the gameplay in Volta feels a little bit more like i I'm just gonna dribble this one in. Feels a little bit more like FIFA 19 gameplay, which is good. I like the way FIFA 19 felt, looked. It reminds me a lot of that. Very welcome addition of FIFA, let me tell ya. I think I accidentally used the semi-pro uh, difficulty again. Interesting. Let's see what other stuff he does to finish his junior. Oh, never mind. Okay. Maybe after the fourth goal, he'll do something crazy and they'll catch him on camera and whatnot. Megged. That was a cool pass. Long, long range. Yeah, see, I put more of that tap in from mid-court, mid if you will. Drilling's still about the same. There you go. Well, that was a quick one, guys. I guess that was a nice little solid preview into uh, Volta. Don't know what that box is. Must just be the goalie box. But then again, you don't really use goalies to use hands in this game. But Not too shabby, guys. Not too shabby. I think I had it on semi priority, which is why it was so easy. But, you know, whatever. Just wanted to give you guys a little uh, preview of it. So, uh... Overall thoughts, um, I like it. Not sure if I love it yet. I like it. Very limited functionality in the game, obviously, so far. So, um, I would say that overall the movement, the fluidity of the game is better, and it's catching up to Pez. I think I think it's still behind, but uh, the players' mechanics are a little bit more natural instead of them uh, facing every ball that's coming at them. They might angle their bodies a little bit to properly adjust to lob balls coming at them so they can knock them down and get them in their direction. Uh, through balls feel a little bit less uh, pronounced, a little bit more subtle. I'd compare that to something as like when FIFA, between FIFA 18 and 19. In FIFA 19, passing became a lot harder than in 18 because every ball wasn't laser guided. And that's, I think, what they've done to a bigger extent to through balls this time around from 19 to 20. So through balls are a little less powerful. They're still effective. They're still very effective. Let me be clear about that. They're still very effective in getting 
um, the ball to your opponents and all that other good stuff, but they're not going to be like laser guided or as or laser guided as much as they might have once been. Uh, goalkeeper play is definitely better. Goalkeeper play in terms of uh, throwing the ball out to your your teammates when it's in the middle of traffic. You know you're able to strategically place that ball a little bit easier. Or the computer helps you do so, so it doesn't feel so tough. So in that regard, goalkeeper plays a little bit better. I still wish they would fix. Um, actually, hang on before I go into that. Uh, negatives, some negatives I've noticed. Um. There's still that bug I mentioned on throw-ins. If you're going to throw it in right away and you're trying to throw it to the left, your player will automatically say, no, nope, I'm going to throw it to the right, and I'll throw it in the opposite direction, and it'll just drive you nuts. It'll piss you off like no other. And that's been going on since FIFA 17, so I don't know what the deal is. It's got to be a software bug that they've been having for years, and maybe they just haven't been able to figure out, or maybe no one's told them about it. But I'm, I'm sure out of the thousands of players, millions of players that play this, somebody would have figured it out. Maybe they keep it in there for shits. It's tough to say. Um, I already mentioned through balls. Uh, the camera angle for telebroadcast, I noticed it's a little bit slower to adjust. Kind of, I think it's got to do with the ebb and flow of the game. I think it flows that way just to make the game feel a little bit more liquid. You know what I'm saying? Not so, uh, quick pace, jarring, etc. and so forth. Um, the game looks great. Graphics-wise, going back to some of the positives, graphics-wise, the players and the jerseys look phenomenal. The color scheme is great. They switched over from a little bit darker blues to now, like, bright reds, which is a welcome addition. Keeps the game a little bit more lively. What else? I'm trying to think here. Volta Football, I think, is going to be a, a big hit. Um, this is only a sm Speaking from experience of playing in the beta, this is a barely a taste of what Volta Football is going to offer. Volta Football will offer you so much more than just what I played in like the three minutes that I played. So keep on the lookout for that, especially in the story mode. It's going to be, I think it's, I think it's going to be a lot better than what people realize. And I think it's going to pack a punch that people aren't anticipating. So you guys will definitely enjoy that. Um, let me think of some final thoughts here. I don't think there's very many other negatives besides the fact that I think they should let you pick between a fixed camera. So, like, for example, on goal kicks, you have a fixed camera angle where all you have to do is aim your analog stick. That's where you're going to kick. Your opponent won't know. I think they need to apply that to every single free kick and either let you do the fixed angle or do the angle where you can adjust so you can, you know, choose where you're shooting the ball. So, like, free kicks that you're within, like, you know, 20, 30 yards, you're able to shoot just like normal. However, if you don't, you just want to pass, you're able to switch that camera angle just as if a goal kick was happening and pass it off to one of your teammates. Just one guy's opinion on that, just because it allows for that flexibility between players and such and so forth. So um, I like all the teams. The positioning for some of the players is quite interesting. Like Neymar is a left winger by trade, but he's a center attacking mid in this lineup. I guess that's just kind of what fits PSG's bill. But one thing I noticed is, let's look at Tottenham for a second when I was playing the other day. So Tottenham, they have this formation going on by default, which kind of makes sense. However, they have Christian Eriksen, who's a center attacking mid, play right mid. They have Son, they have Son as a center forward, which I... I could see it center forward, and I guess his secondary position is left mid, so I guess that kind of makes sense. Let's see what Erickson is. Okay, this makes a little bit more sense, not too much more, but we'll take it for what it's worth. Um, but yeah, I don't like the positioning of... I think someone by trade is like a left wing or left mid, not really a center forward, but then again, I guess I've seen him playing play the striking position quite a bit, so um, one thing I was surprised about, Elder Wilds, like, boost up to 87. He deserves it totally. I just wasn't expecting it. I was kind of surprised that he jumped to 87 from 85 and 18, so kind of cool, right? Um, let's see what else. I want to see what Sancho is. What's his? Him and Pulisic. I'm going to check both of them out. Sorry, guys. Uh, yawning a little bit too much today. It seems 84. Yeah, that seems to be fitting for Sancho. Probably could be even a little bit more generous, especially with 85. Yeah. I think it could be a little bit more... More generous in that regard. Okay, let's take a look at uh, Pulisic just because I'm a, from the States, United States women's national team fan. I actually have a Tobin Heath jersey in my room right now. Probably wear it to class tomorrow, but. And of course, our men's national team don't have a prayer and probably won't for the next 10 years, but I'm willing to accept that. The women's national team are all we need. Let's see, William. I don't even think. 
Pulisic is even in the middle. Conte, totally appropriate, 89. I think Conte's vastly underrated. So is uh, so is Bobby Firmino. Bobby Firmino's ridiculously underrated. Uh, Pulisic, 79. Hasn't changed much. Makes sense. Mason Mount, Tammy Abraham. I like how these guys are basically leading the charge now, and these three are not. If you guys have been keeping up on the Premier League, these three have not been playing like at all. But however, Tammy Abraham, Pulisic, and Mount have all been playing like crazy. So see how that plays out. But guys, those are my pre preliminary thoughts and review of FIFA 20. Um, thanks so much for watching. I really, really appreciate your time and your attention. Honestly, it means the world to me. Uh, if you're on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you like what you're seeing. Or leave any feedback whether you liked it or not. I'm always willing to provide more or willing to gather more insight and help the channel. So, And then if you're on Twitch, feel free to hit up the chat, send me a whisper, or hit the follow button if you feel so inclined. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Have an awesome evening, and we'll see you next time.